Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about or expand upon something that you all seem to be loving, and that is information about rabbit pedigrees, how to make them, all the things. So I wanted to cover something that I thought of the other day, and that is what to do if you want to make a pedigree for your rabbits, but you have no past information or none of the rabbits that you have currently have pedigrees. So a lot of the reasons that you would do it is because it increases the value. Um, so I'm going to give you some tips to some things to think about. The dogs are dog piling and napping over there. Um, but some things to think about before I tell you how to do it. First off, I don't, unless you know the breed, if you're going to buy one without it, you better know the breed very, very well because you are taking that person's word that this animal is purebred. And I'm going to show you a couple of pictures across just to give you an idea. These are pictures that people have shown me saying, well, I want a French lap that looks like this or that. And it, none, these are not purebred French laps. So unless you know the confirmation well, and what, even if you know a few other breeds, you can spot something that's irregular. So just understanding the breed very, very well is the first thing that I would recommend that you do, especially if you're going to be breeding other rabbits and creating a rabbitry around that stock. There's only two reasons that you would buy one or any animal without a pedigree. If your goal is to create a rabbitry business or a small farm business around your rabbits that have pedigrees. The one reason that you would buy a rabbit without a pedigree, namely the pedigreed animals and good quality ones are much more expensive. Um, it's a good way to get started if your budget is small, but like I said, the thing is, is that pedigree is what gives your animal value and what gives your animal legitimacy. So I, I used to see people do this with French laps a lot and you could get one for 30 bucks sometimes without a pedigree. However, you know, it's kind of like, well, what's the point of that? Because that really doesn't, um, it, again, you're losing value. So, but they had the intention of creating a pedigree. So if that's your intention to do that, or the only other reason to buy one is that if you see one that has amazing um, confirmation and it doesn't have one, just because maybe someone didn't know what they were doing or they just didn't feel like dealing with pedigrees and they just didn't know how, then that would be the only other instance that you would buy one. If you're going to make a pedigree literally from ground zero, none of your animals have any information, it's going to take you up to like about a year and a half to three years depending on the breed. So if a rabbit can be bred around the six month mark, which is the smaller breeds that you know are much faster to maturity, or with the French lops where it's nearly 10 to 12 months um, age wise before they can be bred. So just consider that time frame of being, you know, like if you're starting from that, you're not going to be able to demand as high of a price for your animals until you get that pedigree completely full. Okay. So how are we going to do this? <laughs> so first off, never, and people even do this when they have the information, don't make anything up. Don't fib about it. If you don't know the color, then figure it out or ask someone to get to, to, you know, help you. Some people will call a fawn a blonde. That's not legit. You look like an idiot. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm not pulling punches here. Don't screw this up. I've had so many people call me to try and get some, a little bit more accurate information of rabbits that had come from me because they found me in the, in the bloodlines in the back. And then the animal that they ended up with, someone copied it and called it called the colors brown or blonde or chocolate when I'm like that was that wasn't accurate you know so for the love of all things holy just don't just don't make anything up okay so let's say you're starting rabbit and you only have two animals and then you don't know anything beyond what um maybe was their parents and that was it because you got two babies and you went to the rabbit breeder and you you were able to find out that information so Start with what you got and what you what you know. What you want to get on the pedigree to be considered a full pedigree is every single animal has a name, an ear number, which is tattooed into their left ear, a um, their weight, and then their actual breed color. 
So if those four things are on each of the animals, then it's considered a full pedigree. So try at the minimum to get all of those things for each animal. If you bought young animals, still write it down, but wait until they're at least their senior weight, which is um, the ARB has minimum and sometimes maximum weights for certain breeds. Well, all, all of the breeds. Um, like French Labs don't have a max is why I say that. Um, so figure that out for your breed and don't put the weight on the pedigree until they reach that point. If you are going to keep the animal for a long time, then, you know, wait until they're at least a year if they're long to maturity so you get a full picture of what they're able to mature to, okay? I have pedigree templates in the shop, which are super affordable, and you can find the link in the description. Um, so if you're going to, let's just say you're starting small, and you did go to a rabbitry that has the parents too. So you know that you're gonna be able to tell the information from the animal you have. But ask what are, ask to see the parents. Um, ask if they know the weights. Those things are okay to ask. You, you know likely if they don't have your animal's mom and dad that they, um, they, they likely don't have ear numbers. Um, so that's something that you're gonna miss. But be observant, you know, see what you can tell just by being there. So um, if you can get the, the mom's name and the color, if you can get the dad's ear name and color, um, even the weight, if you are able to ask that, um, you know, if, if someone's selling you something without a pedigree, they're going to be a little bit lazy about it, but still take what you can get, okay? So as you breed this animal, these animals that are half or no information at all will slowly begin to be, like, they would slowly be, fall off the, the animal's um, information. They would slowly fall off the animal's family tree. So just as you breed it, keep up with the information that you know and that you're tracking. Okay? And that is pretty much it when it comes to creating a rabbit pedigree that, you know, will add value to your animals and, and, and eventually once you get them completely filled out, you will be able to charge more. Okay? So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have not seen how to make a rabbit pedigree, make sure to watch this video above. If you know people who would find this video helpful, make sure to share it to them and I will see you next time.